Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q4 FY23 Earnings Conference Call of JNK Bank, hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. And there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rushat Kapadia from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Michelle. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Q4 FY23 results conference call for Jammu and Kashmir Bank. We have with us from the management, Mr. Baldev Prakash, Managing Director and CEO, along with the management team. So without further delay, I would now like to hand over the floor to the management. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Rusit. A very good morning. Actually, it is a very early good morning, and warm welcome to all the participants. First, let me tender my regrets that we had to postpone the earning call due to some exigencies yesterday. Following on the gloom caused by COVID-19, global economy has been struggling with overlapping crisis over the last two years, be it the geopolitical conflicts, monetary policy tightening through insistent policy, hike, policy rate hikes, or the latest liquidity troubles after a series of global bank crises. While the impact appears to have been contained to some extent yet, the adverse impacts on economic growth are quite visible. With the fears on the global economic front notwithstanding, many market analysts believe that this could well be the India's decade. Basis, the consumption-driven growth led by a large young and rising share of upper middle income population. Incidentally, IMF has projected India's growth rate at, for the financial year 23-24 at 5.9% and average 6.1% over the next five years. However, future growth will be contingent on investment and India emerging as an attractive investment destination. Non-food credit growth of banks in India for the financial year 23 increased by 15.4% primarily due to improved credit uptake in services and agriculture sector with personal loans growing at a shade about 20%. Significant improvement has been recorded in asset quality with banks, gross NPA falling to below 5% level. Owing to inflation concerns, RBI over the last one year has increased the policy repo rate by 250 basis points, resulting in increased borrowing costs, rise of EMIs, and some moderation in credit uptake, especially in the last quarter of financial year 2023. For our home tough, that is JNK, financial year 23 has been a wonderful year. A year buzzing with activity on account of infrastructure development, rail, road, tunnels, smart cities, and social infrastructure, an unprecedented tourist flow of 1.88 crores during the calendar year 2022, and consequent upsurge in overall economic activity. The environment is further infused due to upcoming events scheduled in the Union territory with regard to G20 summit. The government estimates suggests tourist inflow to surpass two crores during the calendar year 2023. Significant push in the budget for financial year 24 for CapEx at 41,500 crores, that is 35% of the total budget of 1,18,500 crores of the union territory. Clearance of investment proposals of above rupees 30,000 crores with land bank of over 47,000 canals for creation of 42 industrial estates. These are all the harbingers of our 
accelerated growth phase in the union territory and ladakh ut also is experiencing commensurate growth in infrastructure and tourism sectors as we announce the annual financial results i am reminded of an of repeated adage that is all is well that ends well in our case financial year 22 23 has not only ended well but has concluded on a high and historic note of success during my first interaction with you last year some friends had advised me not to overcommit on promises of delivery till i am i was more acquainted with the bank its working culture its strengths weaknesses and opportunities but during the first three months of the uh, at the bank itself i had gauged the potential and the intrinsic value that the bank had which only required to be unlocked in a calibrated manner now a year later looking back to my assessment and envisaged outcomes with with those these set of numbers i feel immensely proud to state that on most counts we have delivered better than promised results today i see an unmistakable shift in performance as well as in the fourth as well as in the functioning of the bank right from operations and business to compliance and vastly improved corporate governance the leap from turn around to transformation in the bank is as perceptible as it is promising while making our balance sheet stronger with every passing quarter we have now entered into a progressive phase wherein business growth coupled with process excellence is all set to yield even better returns for all the stakeholders of the bank i am delighted to share with you our record breaking annual net profit of rupees 1197 1197 crores which is a historic and highest ever annual profit of the bank while growing 139% on a yoy basis annually we have also clocked an unprecedented quarterly net at rupees 476 crores our record annual profits reflect not only the improving operational efficiency but brings to fore the resilience resolve and enterprising capabilities of our highly dedicated workforce in a way we have met market expectations and honored the trust reposed in us by all our stakeholders <coughs> <coughs> we have navigated through challenges adopted uh, adapted well in changing market dynamics and much stronger than ever and raring to scale newer heights of growth and prosperity our deposit growth was 6.4% in on yoy and 3.5% sequentially q and q our net advances grew at 17% on yoy and 6% on q on q basis which broadly corresponds to the industry credit growth and an improvement over our market guidance among the sectors housing loan recorded growth of around 20% yoy rest of india book loan book of the bank boiled at corporate credit growth recorded yoy increase of about 22% in jnk and ladakh consumer loans and housing loans recorded growth of 19% a piece on the operating results improvement is conspicuous on every parameter be it pre provisioning or bottom line interest income is up by 25% yoy for q4 and 17% for the financial year net interest income is up by 22% yoy for the quarter and 21% for the financial year despite proportionately providing for the wage revision which is due from november 22 operating profit is up by 75% yoy for the year cost to income ratio 
has moderated to 66.22% for the year against 77.18% in the previous year, despite creation of proportionate provision for the wage revision, which is due from November 22. The trend is evident and we are on course to bring it gradually down to industry level by addressing the factors. The highlight of performance during the year is reflected in vastly improved assets quality of the bank. Our gross NPA has come down to 6% level while net NPA is well below 2%, which are decadal lows on these parameters. <clears throat> we had envisaged a net recovery of rupees 1000 crores in NPA. The achievement far exceeds the guidance with the net recoveries of 1300 crores in NPAs and another 120 crores in technically written off loans. We continue to maintain a provision coverage ratio of about 85%. With stabilization of the upgraded core banking solution, we have greatly tied over the slippages also, which had been elevated during the first three quarters due to some technical issues. Another major highlight is the reinforcement of balance sheet strengths by augmenting the capital adequacy. We raised the tier two bonds over rupees 1000 crores in Q2, uh, Q3 and sig significant internal approvals during the year have resulted in improved capital adequacy ratio of 15.39% with CET1 above 11%. <clears throat> Here, I would like to inform you that the bank had launched ESPS during Q4. ESPS is Employee Stock Purchase Scheme during Q4 for raising of up to rupees 300 crores for equity capital from employees. And the issue was fully subscribed. However, owing to observations of statutory auditors regarding transfer of amounts by some employees from their general purpose pre-existing personal loans, that is salary overdraft and consumption loans, to their same bank account used to subscribing to, to the issue, we as a matter of uh, for adopting prudent corporate governance standards have not reckoned the amount into, in the capital and a decision in this regard shall be taken after getting clarifications and clearances. <coughs> the bank has also onboarded a merchant banker to explore sale of stake in PNB MetLife. Employee productivity and profitability has improved significantly. Net interest margin during Q4 was 3.94%. And for the financial year 2023, it stood at 3.89%. There has been some increase in cost of deposit due to higher growth rates in term deposits, which is a result of hardening of interest rates prompting some shift from saving to term deposit. However, our CASA at 54.10% is at a healthy level. We expect our name to remain strong as a good amount of our dated securities portfolio that is about around 8,000 crores at lower current yields is getting redeemed this year, which will get reinvested at a higher yields. In <coughs> Sorry. At a higher yields, improving our returns on investment portfolio. Board directors of the bank have recommended dividend at 50% of the face value of shares. Bank had paid the last dividend to its shareholders for the financial year 2016. So the resumption has been after seven long years. Looking ahead, we recognize that the financial landscape is constantly evolving, but we are highly optimistic about our growth for the current financial, current financial year. <laughs> With various transformational projects underway, we expect a surge in business among business along with upward movement in other financial indicators. Growth across all segments will be our prime focus besides increasing our footprint in strategic areas of our country 
as part of business expansion and risk diversification while retaining our stronghold in J and K and Ladakh. <coughs> I need some hot water. Let me put it on record that striking a balance between digital presence and physical relevance, we have set, up, set out on a transformational drive that will accelerate business growth while enhancing customer experience and adding delight to their digital journeys. Towards this end, we are making rapid advances in becoming a tech bank by adapting to best global practices and investing in advanced technologies from open banking API STP platforms and cloud adoption to AI and ML based analytics to drive innovation and improve business outcomes. Lastly, we celebrate this milestone. We remain mindful of the complex challenges that lie ahead due to ever changing global and regional economic landscape. But with a deeply dedicated team, the support of our customers and our unwavering commitment to excellence, we are confident as well as prepared to adopt the, adopt the, adapt to the new realities. Together, we have achieved this historic milestone and took, I, I look forward to, your, to our collective journey towards a shared future filled with ever great achievements. Once again, I thank you all and acknowledge your guidance, support, and trust, and we, we expect, to, expect it to continue in the coming days. <coughs> For financial year 2024, our guidance will be credit growth of about 15%, NIM in the range of 3.75%, CASA in the range of 55%, <coughs> cost to income in the range of 60%, ROA around 0.90%, ROE around 14%, gross NPA around 4.5%, net NPA around 1.5%. 1.5%. I'll be glad to have your questions now. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star then one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Manish Ostwal from Nirmal Bank Securities. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity and uh, consolation for delivering a great set of numbers for the financial year 2023 and surpassing your guidance uh, in, in, by a big margin. So thank you to your leadership and, and uh, team uh, JNK uh, uh, for that. Uh, my question on the first on the sir, balance sheet growth on the quarter to quarter, you have seen 9% growth on the balance sheet side and 6% loan book side, but the NI down by 1%. So is there any month end related loan growth or lower category of uh, spread book uh, growth during the quarter? Can you explain why there is an anomaly in the NI side versus the balance sheet growth? Yeah. Manish, thank you very much and good morning. And uh, you have been always a great, great guidance and support to us. Uh, as far as this uh, uh, last quarter decline in net interest is because of the factor that uh, there was a continuous growth in the policy repo rate and uh, there was a demand from our customers that uh, some, our profitability was okay, so some relief was passed on by us voluntarily to our customers. That is. 0.50 basis point to across the board all customers <coughs> and one basis point 
to our customers of weaker sections. So because of that, they, they, they dip in this net uh, interest income, particularly in the last quarter. That was the only reason. Okay. Secondly, sir, you guided your, uh, your guidance, the cost to income ratio 60% from the current uh, financial year 66.2%, so which yes. is a significant improvement. But if you take the over uh, the medium term journey for this line item to play out because of the increase in the product productivity across the business line, so can you can we expect the we can further the journey can reach to 50% in two to three years time frame? Uh, how do you see that uh, thing to play out in your assessment? Yes, Manish, actually the, the trajectory will be like this only. So for this year, we are targeting 60% and going forward, it should be coming to the range of 54, 55% as per the industry standard. Maybe another one or two years, we should be there. Okay, and lastly, sir, any update on the equity capital raise plan for the bank for the financial 2024, any plan for that? So as of now, we are adequately capitalized. And uh, uh, we may require growth capital, but we, we have to go to the board. As of now, we are not uh, uh, approached the board. Uh, hopefully, in, the, in this quarter, we will reach out and we'll advise you suitably. But capital raising plans will be, obviously, uh, we'll be looking at in, in the third quarter or fourth quarter. And lastly, sir, you've given a guidance of credit growth of 15%. So similar will be the deposit growth or uh, how would the Deposit growth, we are expecting around 10%. That is what the industry uh, guidance also is there. We are in line with that guidance. So we are expecting 9 to 10% in deposits or 11% Matthew. And uh, credit, of course, will be around 15%. Thank you very much, sir, and uh, pleasure to talking to you. Thank you. Thank you, Manish. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankit. Ladhani from Mahindra Manual Life. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, sir. Th uh, thank you for the opportunity. I just wanted to, you know, get your thoughts on the auditor qualification that is there in the uh, report. There. Yes. Uh, good morning, Ankit. Uh, so, as I have covered it in my opening remarks, so we had a issue of employee stock purchase scheme in Q4 of the last year. And this issue was oversubscribed. The issue size was 300 crores in the equity capital. But the auditors, uh, the, this, this, some of the, our employees, they have utilized their existing uh, limits in the consumption limits, consumption loan limits, personal loan limits, and uh, transferred the money from these limits to the saving bank account. This money in the ESPS was invested from the employees' saving bank accounts. So there was a, a, a difference of opinion between the bank and the, 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 chartered, uh, the yeah. statutory auditors. Uh, they said that this is indirectly funding of your own equity uh, by way of granting loan to your employees. So uh, since there was a difference of opinion, so as a matter of abundant caution and uh, the best corporate governance standards, we have not reckoned this amount in the capital and the decision will be taken after getting the clarifications and clearance from respective authorities. So this is that. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, and one more question. Uh, the, the deposit growth for this year is actually at close to 6%, which is, you know, uh, lower than lower than what uh, what has been there for the industry as well as, uh, say, how do you expect it to move from 6% currently to 10% in the, in the next year? Yes, uh, Ankit. Uh, yes, I, I I understand that uh, the the growth in deposit has been little uh, subdued during this year, but uh, now this year there will be two plans for improving the deposit. One will be that we are focused on improving car part of SA uh, by both ways by providing the digital solutions to our customers, and the second year marking the dedicated current account marketing teams for the niche areas, particularly in our j and territories. The second strategy will be that we are expanding in the rest of India operations. The purpose will be also for deposit growth besides the advances. So the, uh, we are sure that these two steps uh, will help us in, in improving the deposit. Madam, 
but any particular reason that you can pinpoint for the you know lower the industry deposit was in six percent or it was just competition and you were not you are not ready to say pay high interest rate something on those things. No, actually there there was uh, as of now in in our area of operations we don't uh, foresee any stiff stiff competition though we welcome the competition because uh, it improves our efficiency also. But as of now I'm I'm sure that. There one one or two factors may be counted that the now the government deposits which used to be in the shape of current account or same bank account they are shifting through PFMS and the efficiency of managing the funds has improved on the government level so that has also affected our deposit but finally this uh, is being compensated by mobilizing the retail deposits from the general public and also Ankit I would like to inform you that. We are adequately capitalized. Uh, adequately, the liquidity is there for the financial year 23. A large number of short-term investments, uh, which we, uh, which, which we are, we are, uh, we don't for pursue deposit growth aggressively because of the large number of short-term investments we had in the treasury. Okay. That's it from my end. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ankit. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star then one on their touchstone telephone. The next question is from the line of Ashwini Agarwal from Demeter Advisors LLP. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, congratulations to you and your team for delivering an excellent set of uh, numbers and uh, exceeding uh, the guidance and the targets that you had shared with us earlier. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, one is that in your opening remarks, you spoke about expanding your presence in the rest of India. Uh, and I just wanted to ask, what is going to be your loan growth strategy outside the state of uh, or outside the UTs uh, that you're present in. Because historically, you know, that has been a pain point for the bank where you have gone and lent uh, in geographies to borrowers who were you familiar with or your bank was not familiar with, and that resulted in stress in, in loans. So how are you going to pursue the loan growth strategy uh, outside of your core area of operation? Okay. Ashwini, thank you very much and good morning to you. Uh, very good question actually you have asked. Uh, this The focus on rest of India operations, particularly the loan growth, is continuing from the last year. And if you see, the growth in rest of India business is higher than our overall business in, in the advances. So the same strategy will be followed and continued during this year also. Uh, the strategy was that we are focused aggressively on booking the quality uh, corporates that is high rated corporates, triple A rated companies, and also the good Navratnas and Maharatnas. The, we, we have been successful in implementing this strategy in of India business. We will continue to do that. Besides, this year, we will be adding the focus on home loan segment during this year. So I think this rest of India business with a calibrated approach and a cautious approach, we should be able to make a good amount of business in our rest of India territory and branches. We have improved in the credit underwriting. We have improved, Ashwini, there's improvement in credit underwriting skills of the staff also. Okay. Sir, the second question relates to your response to the first uh, participant. Uh, where you said that you've given a rebate uh, so the, on the interest rate, which is why your NIM or net interest income did not grow during the fourth quarter. So this is on the loan side you gave a rebate to all yes. your borrowers. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay. Across the board, 50 basis point, and for weaker sections, 1 percentage. Okay. Was this a one-time thing, or that's uh, on an ongoing basis going to continue? No, no, this was a one-time thing because of the there was a demand from the customers, and uh, we, we acceded to their demand. Only one time. Okay. Okay. And sir, uh, coming back to the auditor's qualifications, um, the, I had two follow-up questions. So there, was, there were two qualifications actually. One is that some people borrowed money to subscribe to the shares, as you pointed out. But the second one was also that 
some of the subscription money came in after the shares were allotted which i think is uh, sort of operationally unacceptable because you can't issue shares uh, unless the money is received and the related question is how many such instances are there i mean if you could share the numbers of how many employees subscribed out of which how many people had borrowed and how many employees put in the money after the shares of issue so i just want to understand the scale of uh, this uh, trespass if i may yes. use the word yes 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 let, let, uh, should i ask my cfo to respond ashwini yes please uh, good morning ashwini uh, this is pratik punjabi i am the cfo with the with jnk bank uh, to to i i answer the question in in the way that we ran the or implemented the entire scheme exactly in the way asba functions so at the time of application immediately lien was marked on the saving bank accounts of any employee wishing to participate uh, uh, in the scheme so the issue closed at 5 pm on 21st of march and nrc was called and allotments were decided so operationally by the time it was all decided it was beyond 6 and then 22nd of march is a holiday so uh, the staff had left but we still uh, ran the query uh, or the program from our uh, remote accesses and the money was debited very few like out of 274.75 crores collected hardly few lakhs was spilled over and the query didn't run which got collected on 23rd of march so in effect Uh, we collected exactly in line with the SEBI guidelines and uh, ASBA functioning. Okay, and sir, how many people uh, are uh, sort of uh, you know in this situation where they borrowed money to fund their savings bank account? Uh, no, actually, uh, Ashni, uh, we the total subscription was nine thousand eight hundred employees, but. Okay. there was there was no loan for this purpose from the bank side bank has never granted any loan for the purpose of investment in uh, this uh, esps by the employees that is one the another thing was that the money was debited from the same bank accounts of the employees and that same bank accounts uh, in some cases we are not able to understand whether that money has come from the loan account or it has come from any saving uh, account so that very difficult to understand uh, that that how this money has come in the saving bank account that is already yeah okay okay all right that's all i had uh, sir all the best and uh, you know i wish you the best to achieve all the very very ambitious and aggressive targets you set out i'm sure you'll do very well in the coming year thank you ashwin thank you The next question is from the line of Debish Agarwala from IDPI Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Sir, three questions from my end. What is the current outstanding balance in the restructured loan account as on 31st March? Yes. Uh, good morning, uh, yes. Debish. Uh, yeah. So I am requesting uh, Mr. Suja Andrabi, our general manager, credit. General uh, manager, IAPM. He will respond to this very please. Yes, so the restructured book is around 2,400 crores there, out of which uh, around 1,200 crores is in the NPA, and uh, we are holding uh, around 78 to 80 percent of the provision against the NPAs, and overall provision against the restructured book is in the range of 48 to 50 percent. Okay, uh, sir, how has been the collection experience from the restructured book in uh, last financial year, that is, FY23? Yes, it's, it's, it has been very good. Uh, in fact, it, uh, the, the structured book has come down uh, by around 1,200 crores during this year, and uh, we had a very good experience. We had, we had upgradations. Uh, we had uh, a lot of recoveries in this. That is hardly any slippage. Slippages have been taken. The book is holding well. Yeah. Okay. Okay, sir. Th- uh, thank you. Thank. That's all my question. Thank you. Thank you, Dios. Thank you. Participants who wishes to ask a question may press star then one. The next question is from the line of M B Mahesh from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Hey, good morning. Uh, I'm sorry if I I think we missed the earnings update. Uh, what are the slippages for the quarter? Yeah, 
Mahesh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, morning. Uh, yeah. uh, we, we have gross we have figures uh, around uh, 1,000 crores for this quarter, for the for Q4, but uh, they are significantly lower than what we used to have in the first three quarters. I can uh, share with you, June quarter, we had a uh, uh, gross slippage of 2,200 crores. Then in September, we had it around at 1,800 crores. Then in December, it was around 2,500 crores. But uh, during the first three years, la last quarter, uh, we, it, was, it has come down drastically, and it's around 995 crores gross slippages. But uh, I can assure you that April was a significant uh, down, uh, downfall in this. And we, it was in double digits only. It has not even crossed 100 crores. So this 995 crores, can you give some breakup as to what has resulted in this for this quarter? Yes, uh, it's, it's, it's both corporate as well as uh, retail. Uh, something, uh, two-thirds is from the corporate side and uh, rest is in retail. But most of it has been upgraded. And uh, the, the, the next slippage uh, for the whole year is at... Yes, there were some technical issues and those have been addressed and everything uh, is addressed now and from April, even March uh, has been very good. April has been uh, significant improvement. It's only in double digits and we'll, uh, we'll have further improvement in this. Mahesh, uh, can I just come in here? Uh, the, the issue was relating to our upgradation of technology platform. We had shifted from Finacle 7 platform to Finacle 10 in the month of June. After that, uh, there were some technical glitches in the system and because of that the slippages were happening. Though we were able to upgrade it immediately, but we were not able to fix the issue. So in the month of January we have fixed the issue. After that you find there is a drastic improvement in the slippages. Thanks, sir. And uh, in, the, in, the, in this year, do you have any major resolutions which is still pending on the corporate side that you are waiting for? Yes, yes. yes. What is it? In terms we, have, of what? Uh, we have resolutions coming from NCLT, both in, uh, 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 we should expect recovery of uh, around 300 crores from there. Then we are also selling, uh, assigning some uh, loan assets to NARCEL. They are uh, doing their due diligence, and uh, by uh, June quarter or by the uh, September quarter, there should be a transfer of around another 300 crores to, to NARCEL, so that will give a big boost. Uh, then we are also planning to uh, sell uh, some uh, of the loan assets to uh, ARCs, but uh, uh, that will take some time. That will uh, perhaps happen in Q2. Uh, and uh, there are other recovery measures that we are taking in the, uh, the UT of JNK because most of the portfolio is uh, on sole banking basis. So, so, so Mahesh, uh, the the process which we started last year for recovery and uh, the resolutions of. NPS, particularly the big NPS in the rest of India, uh, the quite old one also, that will continue and we have a book there which we, we understand that that book has now matured and the recovery will continue getting from those accounts. Sorry, just one clarification. Uh, is it fair to assume that FI24 credit costs will also head closer to zero or probably yeah, negative? Yeah. Yes, because we will have, have the uh, this provision right back. So sure. this will be zero or less than even that. Sure, sure. Thanks, sir. And we have, we have been conservative in the writing back of prof, uh, provisions. <laughs> we have maintained ahead provisions. So, so those will also will be unlocked during this year. Perfect, sir. None. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Goel from Invest Savvy Portfolio Management. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning. I'm sorry to interrupt, sir, Mr. Cohen. Sir, your audio is not clear. I would request that you use your handset, please. Hello, is this better? Yes, sir. Better. Please proceed. Okay. Uh, uh, congratulations on a great set of uh, numbers. Uh, very happy to see a consistent improvement in performance. I uh, think quite a few of the queries have been answered, but I have two queries which remain. One is uh, the retail profitability uh, quarter on quarter is uh, down by some 100 crores, 113 crores. Is, uh, what part of that was because of the rebate offered? And is the rebate a, reduction, a permanent reduction in the rate or the spread? Or is it like for the quarter it's been offered and next quarter it will not be offered? That yeah. is one. And the other is 
in terms of the impact of slippages what is the impact of slippages on the profitability so while you given you know it's very encouraging to see that slippages have come down from 2200 crores to 900 crores and possibly going to be less than 300 crores in terms of profitability how much does that translate to profitability these are the two questions please yes thank you very much ashish uh the first thing is that the the discount of uh, interest rate was a one time measure which was given to the disabled uh, sections of our customers and uh, after that uh, the, this we are holding that rate and uh, we are not discounted further anything that is one and uh, uh, another thing is the slippage is uh yes obviously the, the slippage is will have the positive impact on the profitability like it uh because uh, ultimately the though earlier also the slippages were going uh, were recovered immediately but now this ab initio this is this being contained by following up uh, at, at at the level before sma yeah exactly and uh, you see the there were slippages the slippages were very much on the higher side during the first three quarters of the month uh, for the of the year and even in january month like uh, our md sir said that there were some technical issues we had done a lot of customization in the previous version of the pinnacle which were actually not migrated to the new version so there were some technical issues and due to those technical issues the account was got downgraded but those were upgraded also immediately and interest reversal actually did not happen so we didn't have to reverse any interest on that part it was a uh, almost a simultaneous downgrade and then an upgrade so there was no adverse impact actually of those slippages on the interest so you might see i have seen that the interest didn't fall during those days because we didn't have to reverse the interest those those were uh, almost simultaneously upgraded and now exactly now when these are down definitely there is an improvement in overall working and other over the npa as other there is no new accretion actually there is a net there is a decretion in the npa uh day by day and we are expecting it to go further down by 700 to 800 crores like we have today given the uh, we have reported a figure of 5 5200 crores we are expecting it to go below 4500 crores by the year end so actually there will be an unlocking and there won't be any interest reversal uh, into that is interest income will not get down thank you sir The next question is from the line of Arjun Bhatia from Bowhead Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, sir. Then good morning. You are audible, Arjun. As Isha? the current participant, uh, so the current participant has left. we'll move on to the next participant and the question is from the line of amit p an individual investor please go ahead uh, okay good morning sir and congratulations for your great performance uh, so i have two questions uh, so one question is uh, i mean it is regarding the metlife stake what you have got so on that i wanted some clarity in terms of when the sale would take place and what is the approx uh, valuation of that okay yeah actually uh, we had given this guidance last time also that uh, we are exploring the possibility of uh, divestment of this pnb metlife uh, stake and uh, the amount that is there uh, in our books is almost uh, 60 crores and the uh, actually uh, we had obtained a valuation uh, previously also so they valued as a company at around uh, 12000 13000 crores so that gives uh, this value of almost 360 375 crores to this uh, investment and the merchant banker has already been onboarded in fact we had uh, onboarded uh, the merchant banker in the uh, q4 itself and uh, let us see it can materialize uh, during this quarter or in the next quarter uh, okay got it uh, understood thanks for that response and i have another question Uh, so that is like uh, we have discussed all the positive aspects of how the bank is performing, but uh, coming to the negative aspects that what we foresee in the next uh, say one year of time is is there anything that can be highlighted or can be presented? Yeah, I think uh, Amit, the 
major focus will be how to improve our deposit portfolio that is a challenge for the industry also and for us also obviously there the more focus will be required more energy will be invested there so and i'm sure because uh, the acceptability of the brand uh, in, in particularly in our home territories will help us in improving our liabilities franchise and besides that this the efforts will be augmented by our expansion plans in rest of india as we have already covered in our opening remarks okay great so okay so coming to okay one more question i have got so like uh, looking at uh, the branch opening we see lot of branches that are opened in the state of jammu and kashmir and union territory of ladakh so how, how and how about uh, the i mean the branches in south india or the other parts of india how much branches uh, the target is to add for the next one year uh amit uh, uh, for rest of india uh, we have planned say uh, around 20 to 25 branches on the major cities uh, rest of india also and other part uh, means south india also and other parts of the country but as far as our home territories are concerned i think we have adequate coverage as of now yes we are we will be thinking uh, the new branches only at strategic locations uh, and otherwise whatever will be required for financial inclusion that minimum will be ensuring in in our home territories okay okay got it okay thank you so much i'm good thank, thank you sumita thank you sir the next question is from the line of sonal from bowhead investment advisors please go ahead hello sir congratulations on very good numbers and the turn around we have you know uh, uh, come through uh, i had several questions apologies if you know i joined little late so firstly you know what is the outlook uh, all these questions are pertaining to 2024 so what is the outlook for gross for advances growth you know for provisioning for you know gross slippages and you know uh, recoveries as well as names sonal good morning uh outlook for advances as i have covered in my opening remarks we are looking uh, to a uh, growth rate of around 14 15% in the range of around 15% in advances that is very much in the line with the industry growth uh, estimates and you uh, the second question is relating to nim i think we are holding nim at around 3.89 to 3.90% given a little bit maybe uh, the challenge in the uh, liability franchise i think we should be holding nim around 3.75 to 3.8 definitely in this range and traditionally we have been doing we have been holding this range in in our bank Uh, as far as assets quality is concerned i think you have we have already uh, responded to the queries on assets quality we are maintaining the uh, the quality uh, quality of our assets at at, at, a, at a level where the slippages are now happening very few uh, in the in the last month in the month of april it is less than 100 and i think we should be holding in the similar range also so from assets quality point of view i i can assure you that you will be only surprised to see the uh, positive sides of its quality so provisioning required in fi24 uh, you know as well as what kind of employee cost and other opex growth would you expect uh can i ask our cfo to respond sonal uh, uh, sonal good morning uh, this is pratik here uh see even in uh, financial year 23 we have almost had a flat uh, operating expenses when compared to financial year 22 this is despite the fact that uh, we had uh, proportionately provided for employee cost uh, which uh, ticked in from uh, november 22 uh, in that regard we expect it to remain flatter uh, we don't expect any significant uh, changes in fact our current uh, operating expenses also includes two one of items so of close to 100 crores so uh i i i our guidance would be flat a flat total operating expenses uh, or flat employee cost expenses uh uh total operating expenses i mean when i say flat i, I take it as like 1% increase or something okay and sir uh, that's uh, very heartening to know i must congratulate the md sir he's really turn around the bank along with his team both on every aspect you know and that in a very short period of time uh, you know uh, 
sir uh, in the sma1 sma2 if it's possible for you to share the current numbers as well as the outlook uh, you know and in what time frame do you think you will get this also under control you know and uh, yeah 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 so well sma1 and sma2 this sujat will be talking on this sma1 and sma2 the potential uh, and uh, and pa's portfolio was it was sonal it was uh, and if you talk of march 22 it was around 10470 crores on that date so due to continuous follow up at the level of uh, from the level right from the level of our md sir to the grassroots level that the desk officer at the branch so there has been significant improvement uh, i should say this year is was the path breaking year for as far as our quality is concerned right in recovery in nps as well as controlling our smes so as of march i can share with you it was it has it has been reduced by more than 50% and we had a, we had sma1 and sma2 aggregate uh, balance of 5300 crores only as on 31st of march 2022 against 10500 crores as on 31st of march 2022 there is so significant sir, improvement is, yes what is the sma one out of this and what is the sma two out of this and historically you know after a week or so because of technical reasons your sma falls you know there is some technical issue which still needs to be fully sorted out you know so we yes. could give a sense has it further reduced in middle week and what the number is you know yes, yes, and yes, what yes. is the break up between sma1 and sma2 month, you can see by 20th it will not be even 3% 2% of 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 the uh, our uh, advances portfolio yes as standard as what is the figure of sma1 and sma2 out of this yes sir sma sma1 as on 31st of march uh, it was uh, 5200 uh, crores and the sma2 uh, was only 100 crores sma2 was only 100 crore and sir can you give a mid month number in april so that we have the context any mid month number in the april you know which would reflect what the sma1 and sma2 had fallen to i don't have it with me but but uh, it uh, as on 29th april i remember it was just 2900 crores our 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 uh, this sma1 and sma2 combined was less than 2 3000 crores in it was less than 3000 crores sir next question i had was that unlike all the banks in india you know you have significant headroom to expand considering a loan deposit ratio is very very favorable compared to the banks so you could pull out from your investment book and still grow your loan book uh, despite that why do you think your margins will fall because you know you have the lever to shift from investment to loan book so unlike other banks why should you also go through the same trajectory of uh, interest rate fall secondly you know in your retail portfolio um how much time does it take you to pass through the interest and what is the average duration of your you know personal loans and retail loan portfolio uh, you know so how long does the it would it take to reprice that part of the portfolio yeah sonal uh, yeah ishak can you respond yeah, sure sonal uh one part of this uh, question like uh, you said that why are we actually giving a lower guidance on the name Uh, though we have opportunities on the uh, loan uh, loan book side to expand and uh, some shift from investments to the loans that's correct previously uh, our risk capital was very low our capital was low and so we couldn't have uh, much of the risk weighted assets on our book but now that the capital adequacy has improved over the time definitely it makes a lot of sense to shift from uh, the low yielding investments to uh, loans and one more thing uh, the, like uh, md sign is the presentation he gave a number uh, like 8000 crores of dated securities that are actually getting redeemed this year during the uh, low interest rate regimes over the last two years what we had been actually pursuing in the investments why we were going with very short term investments uh, cds t bills and short term uh, this uh, dated securities but the yields on those were in the range of 4 and 5% now with the redemption of so much of an amount definitely a part of it like md sir also said that we will not be pursuing deposit growth in excess of 8 and 9% 9% in the range that is a, that is one part that is an indication that there will be the, some funding of the loans from the investments that are getting redeemed so though we are given a conservative this uh, estimate of the nim definitely but 
the uh, thing you put forward is very valuable and we are also uh, already contemplating that we have to ship some part of the low yielding investments and actually we have got the opportunity these are actually getting redeemed this year and uh, these will actually there will be a shift from this to the uh, loan book but it will be a calibrated one it will be a calibrated one so the funding will be uh, from this uh, to the other part so sir if i have understood you correctly your nims outlook is little on the conservative side uh, it could be different and as you continue to reprice maybe your outlook for nims in fi24 could be higher than in fi24 uh, and my second question was is my understanding correct and my second question was as far as your retail loan book is concerned personal loan book is concerned you know how long does it take you to reprice so maybe if you are not fully able to reprice this year would that happen in 2025 and therefore would the names further expand in fi25 yeah uh, sonal just just a moment ashutosh uh, will be responding sonal uh, i am ashutosh sarin uh, actually our uh, the retail retail loan book uh, major, majority of which comprises the uh, the personal uh, loans which have been given to the government employees it is it is on a uh, fixed uh, interest basis Uh, although it is linked with our uh, three uh, three years MCLR, but the rate of interest is fixed for the full duration of the uh, the loan, and they generally are in the range of seven years. Oh, I see. Sir, yeah. going forward, are we changing this model? No, Sonal, because we are having a good margin there. So, and uh, there is acceptability of the scheme. Uh, among the government employees, so we will be holding this. And slippages. And slippages are hardly any slippages there. And uh, so now the only first part of your uh, question about the name, I think we have kept it conservative. Uh, we will see how the market bears and how we are able to shift the investment book to loan. Maybe uh, after one or two quarters, we will have the guidance revised. So lastly, uh, I think the bank has done a fabulous job. You know, in last one and a half years, on every front we can think of, we've been tracking the bank for nine years. You never seen a period like this in last nine years, and these kind of initiatives at the bank. So my heartiest congratulations to the team, and one humble suggestion, which we could, uh, you know, um, again, uh, uh, you know, take it to a different direction. Maybe we should, sir, hold future quarterly con calls after releasing the presentation. You know. um at least give the investment community you know a few hours or a day to go through the presentation and hold it in a time which is convenient so that we get the maximum attention and attendance from the investment community which may not have been possible today or in the last quarterly call because the presentation came out later just a humble suggestion as a friendly shareholder from myself definitely sonal note this and we'll ensure it Thank you so much. Uh, this was a uh, unprecedented thing. The uh, board meeting it extended very late into the night, and uh, uh, still you will appreciate that immediately when these results were disseminated through the exchanges, I immediately started sending copies of the mail along with this uh, investor update, and that was at 2:45 in the morning. But sir, the investors won't be reading the results at 2:45 in the morning. Unfortunately, they are all asleep. But I ensured it that at least when the when they get up in the morning, they have it. Uh, uh, in their we will ensure Sonal in the future also. We see. Maybe you know, call it 10 a.m. 11 a.m. would have made more sense. Just a simple suggestion, you know. Uh, yeah, nothing. Very good. It's a very, very good suggestion. Idea. Well taken, sir. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, Thank you, Sonal. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Arjun Bhatia from Bowhead Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Can you please provide your risk-weighted asset figure as of Q4? Yeah, here to uh, Arjun, uh, our uh, CRO is going to respond to your question. So, uh, our uh, risk-weighted assets, uh, the total um, risk, great risk-weight assets, were sixty-seven thousand three hundred sixty-seven. And uh, our market risk weight was eighteen fifty, and um, operation risk weight was eight thousand one hundred fifty four. That total works out to seventy seven thousand three hundred seventy three. And uh, going by the uh, risk density, uh, we have been able to maintain the risk weight density total risk weight in the range of fifty three percent. And that's a very healthy sign. 
and uh, any outlook for this weighted assets to total assets uh, ratio next year yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll be uh, will be going uh, ahead with the same guidance and try and try to uh, maintain uh, this uh, risk weighted uh, asset density if you also look at the portfolio that uh, has been uh, added uh, to the overall portfolio uh, uh, out of the 4000 around portfolio around more than uh, 2600 700 crores has been the triple a which has entailed a very low risk weight uh, of 20% and that has uh, helped us in in uh, reorienting our portfolio and uh, uh, having an optimal risk return trade off okay thank you so much thank you arjun arjun uh, i would like to add one thing here you see uh, the risk weight actually uh, like uh, our cro said that the incremental risk weights are lower because uh, we are actually now uh, lending to a Uh, better credit quality portfolio we are having better uh, rated uh, this uh, borrowers now but one thing we have to see our risk weighted assets you may see uh, if you compare it with some other banks uh, uh, like the private or uh, the public sector bank you may see, uh, say that it is a little higher but there is a reason we have got a very good portfolio of the government employees of uh, jnk and lata Though there are no delinquencies in that, no uh, credit costs involved, it's a very secure portfolio. But the risk weight that is applied to that is hundred percent, seventy five percent, seventy five percent. So it is a actually that should qualify like that could have attracted twenty percent, like our own employees. It could have attracted a very low uh, risk weight, but then the regulatory guidelines are there, so it attracts a higher risk weight. that actually contributes to this higher risk weighted assets of our book though the risk is not that much got it understood thank you the next question is from the line of hitin borecha from sequent investments please go ahead hello yeah so good morning So most of my question has been answered. Just uh, uh, miss the numbers of PNB MetLife valuation. You have given the valuation is around ten twelve thousand crore, and the value in our book was around sixty crore or fifty crore. I just missed that number, sir. Yeah, yeah. It is the investment is sixty crore. Fine. So it's okay. the book value. It's the book value uh, at the face value of ten rupees per share. So okay. we have got actually six crore shares of the uh, of this uh, company. So okay. at the market value of sixty five rupees, the value, the overall value of the investment is comes to three seventy, three eighty, or to, uh, to that extent. So there will be a gain of around three hundred thirty to three hundred forty crores in that investment if it is offloaded. Okay, okay, understood, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Vitan. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Guru Raj Kalyan from Kalyan Consultants. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good morning and congratulations on an excellent numbers. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, are you able to hear me? Yes, Guru Raj. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, the first question was regarding the uh, PNB MetLife. So you're saying that the value is around approximately 330 or close. That is that sorts my question now. And larger. governance question and my concern since last night has been two things uh one around the extraordinarily elongated board meeting which makes me uncomfortable on the cs investor uh second is uh the, the qualifying comments made by uh but auditors uh which you you responded by saying that listen i mean there's absolutely everything is in line but they mentioned two things uh, one they mentioned very specifically that uh The, the the bank employees should not have been uh, availed of this facility to begin with, and it's also against the uh, the regulations. Could you help me as a as a as a lay investor who has a very large part part of my portfolio uh, in J and K Bank because I believe in the bank? Uh, this was a very rude shock for me. Could you take some time to help me uh, go through this? Please? Yes, good words. Uh, first of all the yes apologies for that the meeting went on long because it has happened because of our discussions were continuously on this topic only we were trying to uh, put forth our point but then finally we exceeded to the uh, point of view of the csas let me make it very clear that 
this scheme, the 2023 scheme of ESPS is just like the scheme which happened in the last 2021. And the same auditors also uh, gave uh, this uh, the clearance for the 2022 scheme. So when the earlier scheme, which is a similar scheme for the employees, the, is, 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 has been already approved by the uh, statutory auditors and other uh, authorities also, we, we, all, we have gone exactly with the similar scheme, uh, means uh, with the same, same process, and there's nothing different between the earlier scheme and the new scheme as far as the uh, ESPS is concerned. Number two is that as per the schemes, uh, this thing, uh, re regulation, the bank was not supposed to give any loan for purchase of shares to the employees. And we adhere to that, <coughs> confirm that <coughs> we have not given any loan to the employees for specifically for purchase of ESPS and followed all the terms of the scheme. That is one. The other thing is that the facilities which they avail are in the form of personal loans, consumption loans. And these, these, these personal consumption loans are having the salaries of the, our uh, employees also getting credited every month. So, so these, these are just like the current account overdraft uh, being used as a saving bank account. Number three, this money has gone not from the loan account. It has gone from the saving bank account of the, customer, of the employees. So the, I think there's no, uh, from our point of view, we are very clear that we have followed the, the scheme uh, appropriately. And over and above, then when there was a difference of opinion between the bank and the statutory auditors, we have gone ahead and sought the opinion of a <laughs> reputed law firm, reputed law firm of the country. They also uh, agreed to the point of view which were put forth by bank. So we are sure that we have not done anything wrong, but it is a matter of time that we will get the clearances and clear this entire team. Thank you. And whatever we have done is a matter of prudence only and in the best corporate governance practices. Excellent. Thank you, sir. The concern is because of the extraordinarily strong language of the auditors. I've very rarely seen uh, such strong language in the dissenting note. That's one. Thank you. But anyway, thank you. I, I, I have understood the situation better. And the final question I have was, the PNB met, uh, is it a question of if or it's a question of when? Uh, yes, it is difficult to say that when it will happen. We will, uh, we will take a call on this. Uh, but as of now, it will be difficult for us when it will happen. Yes, uh, depending upon the circumstances and the valuations, we will take a call and we'll inform accordingly. Understood. So it's on the cards depending on the right price. Yes, yes. Understood. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Guru Raj. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sonal from Bohead Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Sir, couple of questions. Firstly, sir, was there any other reason why the board meeting got, you know, uh, postponed or the employee uh, accounting, cost of accounting was the, ease of accounting was the only reason? This is my first question. Sonal, as I have told earlier that this was, we were trying to influence, uh, to, uh, to convince, uh, convince our auditors and uh, we, we also gave the example of the last, uh, this thing, ESPS, but uh, uh, they were also put for their point of view. So there were some discussions and uh, that was the reason of the, uh, this thing, the board meeting, which went on a little late and uh, no other thing was there. And uh, this was the only issue of discussion. So secondly, on the metal life, this re-clarification on numbers, because I think two different numbers came up in response to someone else's question. So for the sake of clarity, can you recap what is the book value? Is it 60 crores? And what is the market value of metal life? And, and therefore, the difference to two, what is the gain? Because the previous numbers were not adding up. Yeah. It adds up, <laughs> Sunhal. So you see, 60 crores is the uh, face value. These are uh, 6 crore shares of face value 10 that we are maintaining. The company is valued at around 13,000 crores as on date. So that gives actually the value of the, if we uh, say the split value of the share, it comes to 65 rupees uh, around about. So if you go with that, the total amount that will be realized, it will be almost no, no. 400, 400. I'm sorry, 
So the realized value is for the market value is 400 crores. Yeah, and the gain will be 330 to 340 crores. Okay, understood. Uh, so lastly, you know, uh, I think in the opening remarks you mentioned, which I missed, but I uh, came to know now that there has been some rebate given to the customers. Can you please explain what that rebate is? Will it happen this quarter or subsequent quarters? And were the margins low because of that rebate? And if that rebate was to be reversed, what could the expansion in the, uh, you know, margins going forward? Yeah. So this was a one-time activity only. Ashutosh, can you Yes. Uh, so, uh, Ashutosh here. Uh, actually, uh, uh, because of the uh, consistent, persistent uh, hike in repo rates from the RBI side during the last financial year, so uh, we have been we, we have been uh, receiving uh, requests from the uh, trading and the business community and the uh, other uh, stakeholders. Uh, stakeholders also that the bank should come forward given the uh, comfortable uh, profitability position of the bank and as a as a goodwill gesture in the, towards the last month of the quarter three we decided to reduce the interest by 50 basis points. Uh, across the board for uh, uh, trading and uh, uh, MSME customers and uh, for government sponsored schemes we we did it to uh, a one step ahead by one percent so full impact of that came in this quarter and this so one was the impact this one a one-time decision only sir what was the impact on NIMS because of this <clears throat> So the total actually, you see, if you uh, go for the quarter, the total impact on the NII would have been 50 crores. For the quarter I am talking of, for the quarter March. Sir, have you reversed this in Q1 or it will remain like this even in Q1? There is no reversal actually happening. This was a relief that was given to them, so there won't be a reversal. That is the reduction in the interest rate on individual accounts. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. So this reduction stays or the reduction has been reversed and oh, gone no. back to normal in Q1? It stays, it stays. So it is not a one-off in that sense. It is a continuing thing from the... See, uh, see, see, it, it, is, it is like this, the spread, the, uh, uh, yeah, the borrower spread actually, it was actually reduced. So the impact is almost 150 crores per quarter or 600 crores in a year. Right? 50 crores, 50 crores per quarter. No, no, 50 crores was for one month, no? You did it in month. So in the coming quarter, it will be 150. It was done in December 2022. So if it was 1st December 2022. So in the Q3, the impact was only for one month. In Q4, the impact was for whole quarter. And the whole quarter impact is almost 50 crores. You see, our this uh, the portfolio that is actually linked to this uh, is something somewhere like uh, 34, 33,000 crores. So if you go with that, so the impact was in this range, 50 crores for the quarter. So sir, as the cost goes up of deposits, etc., at some point of time, would you take away this uh, spread and make it back to normal at some point of time during the year? or it will uh, stay throughout the year or is too early for me to ask you that question? I think let us let us wait and uh, see uh, depending upon the competitive uh, interest rates offered by other banks we can we will take a call on this. We have to be competitive with the market. And because these are actually floating rate loans and these get repressed and even the suppress also get reviewed after some time. In this case I think uh, the review may be due uh, next year. So. These, all these things get reviewed over a period of time. It is not that it will remain like this forever. So, so can I say this was led by market forces consideration, you trying to maintain your market share or taking advantage of this, not by any uh, other consideration? No, no, no. It was, it was basically to retain the customer and the market uh, competitiveness. And at the right time, you would do whatever it takes to, you know, uh, take advantage of that. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kayur Asher from PNB MetLife. Please go ahead. Yeah. yeah uh, uh, thank you for this opportunity and uh, many congratulations to you and the entire team for a uh, good set of uh, numbers. Uh, sir, most of my questions have been answered. Uh, just one thing. Uh, sir, in the earlier uh, uh, calls, uh, we had guided about uh, uh, targeting a potential uh, rating upgrade. 
So, uh, so I just wanted to understand uh, where are we uh, on that and what are basically the expectations of these uh, rating agencies, uh, whether they are targeting any financial uh, milestones for us to achieve uh, before they take this call. Yeah, thank you very much and uh, you have asked a good question. I was expecting this question from any of you. So, <laughs> Uh, we are expecting rating upgrade as I have also uh, discussed this in the last uh, quarter and uh, hopefully the numbers should give the, com uh, the confidence to the rating agencies this time and we should get a rating upgrade. Uh, sir, just to follow up on that, sir, uh, is there a uh, rating review uh, okay. timeline that uh, we would be considering or? Uh, no, we will be approaching now after these results. We are approaching. We are shortly approaching the rating agencies mm -hmm. and requesting them to uh, review it. And we will also do now. Understood. Understood. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Kiyush. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you, and uh, uh, thank you to all the participants for joining in today. For any further questions, queries, comments, or anything else, the team is always available, and you can also direct your queries to our investor relations desk, and we will definitely respond. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you, sir. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.